So I'm here with Jason from Electric Hydrogen. Obviously, Fifth Wall is so excited mm -hmm. to be a part of your company Thank and you. to be supporting your growth. Tell us about Electric Hydrogen. Electric Hydrogen makes really big electrolyzers that crack water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. These are an acre and a half in size and they operate at extremely high levels of current. That enables us to produce low cost green hydrogen, which is a key component to industrial decarbonization. And green hydrogen, I think, has become incredibly topical in the last 10 years. That's right. And it's a major input to green steel, which is something the real estate industry mm -hmm. is acutely That's focused right. on. Can you talk about that relationship? Yeah. So 20-ish percent of global greenhouse gas emissions come from the construction sector. A great deal of that is embedded in steel and concrete and other base materials that we all use and we all love. And we just have this nagging problem, which is that they take a huge amount of hydrocarbons to, to make, and that creates a lot of carbon dioxide. There is a process for making green steel, it's called green steel, by, uh, it's called the direct reduction of iron, or DRI. It's gonna require a significant transition in the way that we make steel today, but it's entirely possible and it's becoming economic because of the availability of low-cost green hydrogen. In the future, you could imagine steel with a radically lower carbon content, embedded carbon content, available at a competitive price. And by the future, I mean pretty darn soon. Embodied carbon is, I think, the last uncracked problem right. around you know, the right. carbon footprint of real estate, which is 40% of mm -hmm. global CO2 emissions. Yeah. So electrification is the first thing we should do, right? We should use wind and solar as much as we can. There's a firming problem there because it's not always sunny, it's not always windy, but there are some problems that need a molecule, right? And we make molecules to decarbonize our world and we're making them at tremendous scale and, and at low cost. And electric hydrogen has had just a enormous year. You've gone from, you know, really, I'd say, a concept that wasn't yet proven to now real commercial partnerships. Can you talk about some of that? I can. So we've had a huge year and we're gonna have a huge year. Let's talk about what we've done, right? So we opened up a factory in Devons, Massachusetts. It's a 1.2 gigawatt factory. We raised to receive $380 million. That's great. Uh, we also added meaningful commercial contracts, including our first publicly announced customer implementation of our 100 megawatt flagship electrolyzer product that's gonna be in Texas. The customer in that deal is uh, New Fortress Energy, which is a big LNG company, and they're gonna sell that hydrogen to OCI, which is a big world-scale ammonia company. So you can already see it happening. We've moved from proving our technology to meaningfully fulfilling customer commitments. That project in Texas will be producing hydrogen this year, and I'm very excited about that. In 2024, it's all about realizing the promise of our technology at scale. So there'll be a lot more customer announcements coming up. We'll get the factory fully ramped. We have a pilot plant in San Jose that anybody can come and see and watch 10 megawatts of electrolysis at work, which is just a mind-blowing thing to have done in, in a year's time. I think green hydrogen is kind of painted today as this absolutely mission critical achievement for decarbonizing our economy. What is not obvious to people about how impactful green hydrogen can be? Green hydrogen has a variety of different applications. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, right? It's just hard to make and use locally, but it has applications for making things we need, like ammonia for fertilizer or green steel for construction or cement. The missing element today, there's really two. Uh, one is, is that we really need long-term firm demand for green hydrogen, even in an economic uh, context where it could be at a little bit of a premium in the near term. And the second thing that we need is an infrastructure layer that allows us to move it around. And we have confidence that that's gonna happen because of our experience in solar and renewables, but also in natural gas in general. We built pipeline infrastructure to move natural gas to power new technologies in combustion and generation, and I think you'll see the same thing in, in, in the uses of green hydrogen. So green hydrogen has a lot of policy tailwinds behind yes. it. What are those tailwinds? Well, you can see around the world government programs that are designed to either create demand or incense supply. Japan and Korea are putting in what are called contract for differences schemes, where they levelize the cost of a green molecule relative to a brown molecule. And those are being designed today and they'll be implemented shortly and you'll see tremendous new opportunities to supply those countries. Europe has a green hydrogen mandate, both domestically produced and imported 
for things like green fertilizer. And then the U.S. has the Inflation Reduction Act, or IRA, which created a $3 tax credit for super low carbon green hydrogen. So all of those converge basically to lower the, the net cost of green hydrogen as the technology and as the industry ramps up. And they're all designed to sunset at some point, and then the industry will, will, will exist on its own and will be a competitor with hydrocarbons in general. What's the next 10 years look like for mm -hmm. electric hydrogen? For us, it's about execution, right? So we have this cool technology. We've figured out how to do it at large scale. We've got to get the cost out. That means we need to make multiple copies of our core 100 megawatt electrolyzer plant so that we can drive the cost out and get our manufacturing yield up so that we can deploy gigawatts of green hydrogen capacity around the world. I think it's gonna happen, it's already happening now. We've got early customers who've come in, we've got five gigawatts of reservations for our electrolyzer technology. We are truly disruptive relative to the way things have been done, so it's all about execution. Everyone loves talking about yeah, unicorns in right. the tech world, and you were the first green hydrogen unicorn. How does that feel? To be honest, no different. Right, we still have to prove it. What matters to us fundamentally is lowering the cost of hydrogen. Our success will come when our customers realize the benefit of an alternative that helps them decarbonize. And you've been working now with Fifth Wall for mm -hmm. quite some time. What's the experience been like? Fifth Wall's been fabulous, right? So Fifth Wall's an investor in both our Series B and our Series C. We have Peter on our board, who is just a tremendous force of nature, of, of energy and perspective that we love and access to the LPs is fantastic. Well, we are just so thrilled to be an investor in electric hydrogen. You're solving such a huge and important problem and we're so thrilled with the success you're having. Well, thank you and we're, we're very grateful for the support of Fifth Wall. Uh, we've also met other investors through Fifth Wall, so the ecosystem is working. And it's fantastic to be around your LPs who share our conviction that this needs to happen and that it can happen. Great.